Hey guys, so this video is on systems, states, work, and energy. Sounds like a lot, but not really. We're just going to introduce the concepts here. So let's talk about a system or systems. There's three basic types of systems. Um, so first of all, what is a system? It's basically whatever we want it to be. So what we always do is we define the system to make our lives easier. Sometimes it's the chemical reaction itself. Sometimes it's a container. Um, but as the the scientist, we get to choose what the system is, um, and our choice is going to depend upon what we're um, trying to find out by the experiment. But the types are open, closed, and isolated. In an open system, um, like this Florence flask on the left here that doesn't have a stopper in it, um, uh, an open system can exchange both matter and energy with the surroundings. So water, you know, if there's water here, it can evaporate or it can condense back down in here, so it's, can move, it's possible to move back and forth. And energy can flow into or out of this container also, you can heat it up, cool it down. Um, now a closed system is basically what we have if we put a stopper in that Florence flask. Now the system cannot exchange matter with the surroundings, but it can still exchange energy. So a closed system can exchange energy, but not matter with the surroundings. Um, so the water now cannot go in and out, it's closed, but the energy, the thermal energy, or whatever type of energy it is, still can. So that's a closed system. In an isolated system, neither matter nor energy um, can be exchanged with the surroundings. So if we put an insulator around this um, Florence flask with a stopper in it, now the insulator keeps energy from flowing back and forth and the stopper keeps matter from flowing back and forth. So it's an isolated system. Um, real hard to get a perfect, perfectly isolated system, but we, we, we do our best. All right, states and state function. So the state of a system, it's defined, the state is defined by the value of, its pro of the properties of that system, things like energy, temperature, pressure, volume, what it's made of, how much, all that good stuff. Um, a state function is a property that only depends upon the current state of the system and not how that system got there. State functions are nice. They make our lives so much easier when we're trying to figure stuff out. An example of a state function would be gravitational potential energy. So let's say um, we start out, here's this building down here, right? And we start out on the ground floor, or outside maybe, right? And we have a certain amount of gravitational potential energy, which depends upon our basically our distance from the center of the Earth. Um, now, if we go up to the fourth floor, we're going to be farther from the center of the Earth, so we're going to have more gravitational potential energy. Now, it doesn't matter how we get there. We could just climb up these stairs, um, and we would have a certain amount of gravita gravitational potential energy on the fourth floor. Or we could run about around the building 20 times, um, jump up and down, and then run up the stairs to the fourth floor. Okay. Um, we, it took us a lot more energy to get up there, but we, uh, we still have, in the end, the same gravitational potential energy. Um, so that's an example of a state function. Energy. So um, we categorize energy as two basic kinds, kinetic and potential. You can think about kinetic, kinetic energy as energy that's associated with the motion of, of some object. Um, and the formula, which you should remember because it's definitely very useful, is that the kinetic energy of an object is equal to one-half its mass times its velocity squared. Um, the potential energy is an energy that depends upon the relative position of two objects. Um, there's a lot of, there are several different formulas for potential energy depending upon um, its source. For example, like we were talking about gravitational potential energy, the formula for that is mgh, mass times the gravitational constant times height, distance. Um, electric work, um, uh, Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r. You do not have to know these formulas. I'm just giving you examples of formulas of potential energy. Um, the only formula on this page that I ask you guys to know is the kinetic energy formula. One half mass times velocity squared. Um, now, internal energy. So, um, internal energy of a system is a sum of all the energy of all all energies of all the particles in that system all of the kinetic energy all the potential energy of all the particles so if you imagine just a, um, a a glass of water right and define that glass of water inside it as being the system 
um, the internal energy would be the sum of all the um, potential energy of all the atoms and molecules in the water as well as um, their kinetic energy, their potential energy, all the energies. That's a lot of um, calculation. If we, want, if, we want to, if we wanted to calculate the total internal energy of that glass of water, it would basically take um, a, really, a really, really long time because there are a lot of particles and a lot of interactions. Basically, we can't do it. Um, but we can measure the change in internal energy, delta U. Um, so, and that's because, and well, one of the reasons is that it's so nice is that it's a state function. So, U stands for internal energy. This is an important equation here, guys. You should definitely know this. This says delta U of a system is equal to Q plus W. Q stands for the amount of thermal energy transferred into or out of the system. If ener thermal energy leaves the system, its neg Q is negative. If thermal energy goes into the system, Q is positive. And W stands for the work done on or by the system. So if the work is done on the system, the system gains energy and W is positive. If work is done by the system, then the system loses energy and W is negative. Um, so like I said, delta U is a state function, although neither Q nor W is a state function. Um, examples of what I'm talking about here. So if we take a gas in a cylinder with a, a piston in here, right? That's this um, picture on the far left right here. If we press down on it, okay, it heats up and releases energy to the surroundings. Q is negative because it lost energy. Um, if we let the, if we um, release some pressure on this piston and allow the gas to push it up, work is done by the system. It, does work on the, the surroundings, it pushes out, and W is negative. Now on the same, on the other hand, if we take that, that gas and we heat it up by, from an external uh, source, we're adding thermal energy to it, so Q is positive, it's gaining energy. Or if we press down on it, um, we're doing work on the system, and um, W is positive, the system gains energy. So those signs, watch out for those guys. Uh, I'll warn you right now that that's the one place in thermochemistry um, that people get easily tripped up and that are the signs, negatives and positives. Okay, so let's talk about work a little bit. There's several different kinds of work. Um, what we call PV work, which is due to a gas expanding or being compressed. Um, and that, by the way, is the one that we are going to focus on here. We're not going to really deal with the other kinds of work at this point, but just so that you know what they are. Um, a, string, a spring, excuse me, a spring stretching or compressing, right? So you, um, if you, you um, like this picture over here, right? Um, if we have, you know, could have the spring anchored at the top, like this picture, or anchored at the bottom, like here. Um, <clears throat> if we, um, pull it down, right, we're, we're, um, we're doing work on the system, if we let it go, it does work. Um, same way here, if we compress it and then let it be released. So that, that potential energy um, increases when we compress it or expand it here. Um, and, you know, it, that's, that's one kind of work, and we're not going to really deal with that too much, although when we do talk about bond energies, this is a very good model. Um, the gas expanding or contracting, um, bubble expansion and contraction. We're not going to really talk about this too much, but it's this is basically surf, what we call surface tension. I'll leave it like that. And electrical work. This is when a current, an electric current, passes through a conductor. And again, we're not going to worry about that too much. So PV work, though, which is what we will focus on, this formula you should remember. And this says that the PV work done on or by the, a system is equal to negative pressure on the... Uh, um, on the system times delta V. Delta V is the change in volume, so the final minus the initial volume. Um, let's look at some units now. Um, we will come back to units of pressure when we do the gas module, but for now these will suffice. Um, a pascal is a unit of pressure, and in SI units it's one kilogram per meter second squared. An atmosphere is equal to 101,325 pascals, which is 101.325 kilopascals, 
we typically use atmospheres in chemistry. Um, work. Remember P delta V, negative P delta V. Well, if pressure is in atmospheres and the delta V is in liters, then we get so units that look like liters times atmospheres. That's a unit of work, liters, atmospheres. And usually, though, you know, we want to talk about joules for work and energy. So here is the conversion. Um, this is not exact, guys. One liter atmosphere is equal to 101.3 joules. Four sig figs, good for us. A joule, in terms of SI units, this is going to be actually quite useful for you guys to remember later on. One joule is one kilogram meter squared per second squared. So those are some units. Let's do an example. <clears throat> Question is, what is the work done on or by a gas in joules when the gas is compressed from a volume of 734 milliliters to 498 milliliters at constant temperature and a constant pressure of 1.37 atmospheres? Real quick, the only reason I mentioned constant temperature is because if the temperature changed, then things would get more complicated. We don't want to deal with that right now. So this is using that equation, W equals negative P delta V. Why don't you go ahead and work that out real quick. When you get an answer, come on back. Welcome back. So W equals minus P delta V. Delta V is, remember, final minus initial volumes, and we want it in liters. I gave you milliliters in the problem, so I just moved the decimal three places to the left to convert the milliliters to liters. So my delta V was 0.498 liters minus 0.734 liters. It gives me negative 0 0.236 liters. And the pressure, it was constant, it's 1.37 atmospheres. So remembering this negative sign, watch out, remember you do that. Negative here, and the negative delta V, it gives us a positive amount of work, 0.323 liters atmospheres. And now here, all we're doing is converting that to joules using that conversion factor I gave you a minute ago. And I end up with about 32.8 joules. Real quick word about the sign and what it means. So because the work is positive, that means work is being done on the system. The system gains that much energy, that much internal energy, by having the work done on it. And that's because it was compressed. And that's all there is to it, guys.